Teresa, can you hear me? I can, Donna. Okay, yeah, good, because we've been ha I've been having problems with my um, connection to Zoom. So I think I accidentally fixed it this morning. So <laughs> yeah, I hear you perfectly. Yeah, it, it was giving me fits last week and I couldn't get in. So uh, for whatever reason, I found something was off on my computer. So yeah, they're kind of touchy, aren't they? Well, I did um, a remote um, tune up of the tower that I have here. And um, I think in the process of when they did that, I think they turned off my um, uh, Zoom, but it wasn't working all that well before either. So whatever happened, I think I found out I wish I could know how I found out. <laughs> I wish I could figure out what I did, but uh, well. accidental, huh? Huh? It was accidental. Uh, it, it was. It truly was, and I not a hundred percent sure what it was that I did. So, but whatever it was, it worked. So that's all. There you go. There we go. So hang on. Let me see who's coming in. Uh, Amy, I think I got it fixed. Sounds like it. Oh, you hear me? Yay! Yeah. <laughs> yes, I and I don't know what I did, Amy. Honestly, something popped up and said it was blocked. And when I unclicked it and went back trying to get back in it, it just boomed. Okay. It worked and cool. but, no, no, I don't know what I did, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> as long as I did it. So you thank go. you for your help. I really appreciate it. So I don't need you to come. Okay. And take, hey, and, will you record this please? Uh, where do I do that? It says um, it's recording already. Oh, cool. Never oh, mind, okay. Donna. It's already in the recording. upper right hand corner. Okie dokie. There we go. So it, and, and let me, I didn't even know how I did that either. So there you go. Okay. Well, I'm going to leave. And if, right. if it stops recording, there's a button at the bottom near where it says share screen and all that. Yeah. And it should say um, uh, record. Okie dokie. I don't see it, but I'm under more. It might be there. Oh, I see. Stop recording. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to leave. And if it stops the recording, then you can go ahead and start it again. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Bye. Okay. Uh-huh. Thanks, Amy. Hi, Larry. Hey, Don. How you doing? Well, it's been a busy day. <laughs> uh, is that a good busy or a bad busy? You know, Mondays are just unbelievably uh, crammed with stuff that I have to do. And then I, I couldn't get in last week to Zoom because it didn't want to let me in. And I found out something was in my computer that had been turned off and accidentally got that back on. So it's been a wild mon Monday here. Yeah, well, it keeps it interesting, right? Yeah, well, I could do without it today, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dana, what is your last name? Dana, unmute yourself. Can you tell me what your last name is? Right. Am I unmuted? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's right. W-R-I-G-H-T. Okie dokie. Great. We're going to wait a second or two to see if we get any more in. And today's we're doing dates and deadline, which Teresa just loves. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> She, That's she, why I'm here. Yeah, she's just a real fan of date deadlines. <laughs> <laughs> and Larry, are you a fan of date deadlines too? Yeah, one of my favorite things. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dana, are you a new agent? I am trying to be a new agent. Oh, that's right. I forgot you're on my list, I think. Yes. Um, uh, well, in the process, if you have any other questions, let me give you my phone number so I can have you call me directly and we'll go over any other 
uh, parts of that that you're having a struggle with. Okay. Okay. So it's three well, this just this just happened to be um, what I needed more help in. Okay. This great. area, so it kind of worked out perfectly. Good. I've, I've I passed the national exam. So. Okay. And the contracts are giving you struggles. Um. Apparently. Okay. Um, <laughs> next week, just so you know, I will be doing it at twelve o'clock, and it'll be on listings. So if you uh, can jump in next week at the same time. And that will be on listings, okay? Okay. And then let me give you my phone number just in case you need something, okay? Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Sure, it's 303-521-8300. Okay. Okay, and Teresa and Larry can tell you I answer uh, between nine and six all the, uh, during the uh, seven days a week, so. I have her on speed dial. <laughs> Every, along with everybody else. So, it's all good. It's all good. All righty. Let's get in here so I can. All right. Let me see here. Okay. Can everybody see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Dana, can you see it? Yes. Okay. All righty. Let me admit Scott. Scott, are you on? He's muted. Oh, okay. But he should be able to hear you. All right, well, all right, that's good. So if you can't hear me, Scott, just give me a, uh, unmute yourself and let me know. Hey, Don, yeah, I just, I'm here. I just oh. was able to get in, sorry about that. Uh, no, no problem. <clears throat> Um, I, and I apologize to everybody who tried to get in last week, but I had major problems with Zoom, not wouldn't let me in. So long story, but um, thanks everybody for coming in. Um, all right, what we're gonna do today is going to talk about dates and deadlines. Because of the changes we've had, major changes in our contracts from 2021 to 2022, I'm gonna emphasize a lot of the changes so you guys can be familiar with them. So day of uh, date, time of date and deadline is everything except your acceptance date. So in other words, if you want all your amend extends, all the objections, all of the, uh, whatever you're sending to the listing agent or you are receiving, you're gonna get from the listing agent, you'd like to have them by a certain time. Now, in paragraph three, you can go down and it says 11.59 uh, p.m. Um, I would strongly suggest that you do sometime between six and nine and not much past nine because people are tired. They don't think properly and they becomes it becomes a problem because um, people get tired and they just don't do the right, they, they see things or they think they've done something and it really messes things up. So if you could pick the same time every time you write an offer, then you're going to have less issues. You can say six o'clock, you can say seven, eight, nine, but nothing too much past nine because it gets really complicated. Alternative earnest money deadline is when your buyer is going, or you, preferably be you, to deliver the earnest money to the title company or agency in uh, that is uh, printed on the MLS sheet. That's going to say go to Remax or go to Cove Banker. Um, normally, co most agencies don't hold the money anymore, so it's normally a title company. So you'll get a receipt, but you have to pick a day, and I would encourage you to pick two or three days after acceptance of contract to get that earnest money over to to the correct parties. So our next one is title. This, the first one is record title deadline and tax certificate. Now you must, if you're becoming a stronger listing agent, please impress upon your title company that the tax certificate has to come with the title. Now, the only time you're gonna have a small glitch on that is usually in January because the, the um, roles haven't been updated properly yet. 
but it's $25 for this and it has to be done on the deadline or there are extended deadlines that are going to be given to the buyer to review everything. So when you list a property, be sure you get, make sure that they get this done properly. Now, this comes from the listing agent and as a selling agent, you should be able to say, I would put a week to a week and a half on this deadline. Don't make it super short because they won't be able to get it. So the next deadline you've got, which is going to be um, record title objection deadline. So that means something in the title came over and the buyer and you are, you know, the buyer's objecting to something. It could be a lien, it could be an IRS lien, it could be a lien from a builder, could be any kind of things in there. Um, but you have to do it, and I would do three to four days after your top deadline of record title deadline. Now you have off record title deadlines, and for Dana's information, this means that if something isn't recorded, but you know about it, it might be a problem for a buyer. So in other words, I'll give you an example. Um, <clears throat> the Centennial flight path goes over neighborhoods east of I-25 in Bellevue. And sometimes people go over and buy houses over there. They don't want to hear the planes going into Centennial. So that would be something that's not really recorded, but it would be an objection to a buyer. So okay. that means that your buyer, if there's a vacant land and they want to know what that is and they're going to build a, a grain plant back there and they don't like it, then they have to do some research to find out what that vacant land is going to be. It's another type of research for a buyer uh, to do. Uh, off record title objection deadline is the deadline to say, I don't like it because I found out Centennial Air, Airstream goes over my house or I don't like the grain uh, plant that's gonna be uh, built behind me. So those are things that are responsibility of the buyer. Donna? Yes. Sorry to interrupt you. No, you're on good. That, on that off record title deadline, is that the same date as um, the record title objection? Uh, hang on just a minute, I messed me up here. Hang on. Oh, so sorry. No, 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 I, it's for me, I touched the wrong button here. Are you, can you still guys see this? It, there's, it's up here and you've got like five different little things listed. Oh yeah, but I've already went through all of that. So let's see oh. what we've got here. Okay, now we're back. Okay. All righty. What happens is, ask me that question again. Is the date for um, number five on dates and deadline, is that the same date as number four as the record title objection deadline? You make the off record title deadline the same as number three, record title deadline. Same Those two record. dates are going to be the same, and the objection dates are going to be the same. When you do that, you know everything's going to come about the first week and a half uh, uh, once everything has been accepted. Does that make sense? So those are all the same date. Okay. Yeah. Well, they're the same kind of like if you make one, then you make off records the same. If you, when you do three to four days later and you have an objection, you use that, that date in both places. Okay. All right. Now title resolution is if there is some objection to the title that came in on the 14th and they read, they, uh, your buyer has a written an objection to title. Now you got to have a re resolution. So that should be two to three days after your objection, so that it gives everybody enough time to research whatever the problem was, okay? Third party rights to <coughs> purchase and approve, <coughs> we don't use. That That happens to be something uh, that you use in the high country in a, in a condo or townhome situation. A lot of times their HOAs uh, say, state that, um, the board has to give approval if you're going to sell your unit or the people that live in this complex get a chance to buy that unit. All right. Now, number nine and 10 is number nine is the responsibility of the listing agent. He's going to title will send you information on the HOA. 
you really need to have your buyer read this because if there's any objection, they have to do it by the 18th. And again, do you see I have all of these dates for the listing agent to get things to you as the selling agent are the same. The objection deadline is the same or termination deadline is the same. Once you kind of learn to keep these within the same time frame, you'll find that you'll have less issues with putting things together. Any questions on that? Seller's property disclosure is something that the listing agent will either send to you after acceptance or it will be in the upload in RE Colorado under disclosures. It is informational only. Your buyers can sign it. Doesn't mean they're agreeing to anything. It just means that they have accepted the document. Lead-based paint disclosure should be if it's a lead-based paint house. And Dana, the lead-based paint house is anything built before 1978, January 1st, 1978. Or I actually know that question. Huh? <laughs> I actually know that question. Good job. And it's Good not job. anything just built. It's if you had a building permit. Well, it's very hard right. to judge the permits, but a lot of times, if there, if there's, if the uh, recording or when you go into public records and discover that it's an early part in 70, uh, 1978, you might want to give a lead-based paint disclosure anyway. And a lot of times people, anything built in 1978 will ask, will automatically give a lead-based paint disclosure, just so you know, okay? Okay. That, but it, yes, you are correct. You've got your date properly done. So there you go. All right, now let's address this new loan application deadline. <clears throat> this deadline means your acceptance deadline to this property is going to be uh, January 4th. Now you have your lender says, <clears throat> excuse me, have already talked to your buyers. The lender cannot complete the application process unless they have a legal description and an address uh, and a fully executed contract on the new loan application. So the deadline needs to be, if your acceptance is the fourth, then it should be the fifth. So the next day, because you've already given all this information to the other agent, I mean, to the lender, and the lender is now going to be able to complete the loan app application process. Now we have a new deadline here called loan term, excuse me, loan term deadline. Hang on just a second, I'm losing my voice. <clears throat> So that new loan termination deadline means, and that should be somewhere between five to seven days after acceptance. Now, the reason it is, is that now Mr. Buyer has been given the terms and conditions and they're going to buy that, they're putting 10% down and it's a, F, it's a conventional loan and blah, blah, blah. That means they're agreeing to that loan or an FHA loan or VA, whatever it is, they're agreeing to this loan. Past this deadline, that means the buyer cannot get his earnest money back. And I'll tell you the only condition on which they can in just a second. So they must have their conversation with their lender. They must understand the terms of the loan and what type of loan they're getting. And can they live with this? Because once the state passes, Basically, it's very difficult to get their earnest money back if they're going to bail because they don't like the loan. The new loan availability means that the loan that the buyers originally agreed to is still available on a certain date. And normally this date you put in about seven days prior to your closing. Any questions on this? Uh, these two? Okay, 16 through 21, we do not use. Um, once in a while, you use it when you purchase something in the high country, but technically we don't use these too much. 
Now we're going to our appraisal. The appraisal deadline is the deadline in which the lender has called an appraiser and they have to get it done by this date. You don't want to put this date too. <coughs> you still want to put this date in here, even if you're doing an FHA and VA loan. It is not that you probably will or will not hit that date. It just means we're trying to get the lender to pump up the powers to be to get this done quickly. Um, just so you know, uh, a VA loan to get an appraisal is submitted to the VA and every Monday there is um, appraisals handed out. Now they could do one, they could do 10, they could do 20. Whatever their deadline is for that day, that's all they're gonna do. So if you don't get out on that day, you have to wait till the following Monday to get out. So VAs are hard. So when you're doing a VA loan, check with the lender, talk to the lender, how difficult are we on, what kind, how, how far back are we on appraisers for VA and FHA loans, okay? You don't wanna put a 30 day closing on a property unless you have checked with your lender to see if they actually can get it done or not. That's most imperative. Obje appraisal objection deadline usually is about two days after this. And that means that something came in. I offered 500,000 for this property, but it only came in at 475. Now there's a problem. On a VA and FHA loan, the buyers don't have to take this home if there's a shortage. Um, unfortunately, on conventional side, buyers are bidding, doing appraisal gaps that create, um, I'll pay $30,000 or I'll pay 100 grand or whatever it is over the appraised value if it you know, doesn't meet the number that we uh, have agreed upon, which I do not like. It's very dangerous for the buyers and it's going to cause a lot of problems going down the road. However, I do know that's the game that everybody has to play right now, but it's not a good thing, but it happens a, a lot. Then now, if you say to Mr. Seller, hey, listen, the property didn't appraise, and I want you to drop down to 475, and the buy, seller says, no, I don't want to do that. If it's an FHA or VA appraisal, that stays on the property for six months. So then, therefore, they can't sell that property under those, those terms. They can only sell conventional. So if you can't resolve by the date you put here, then you're going to be sure. Uh, yeah, you're going to be sure that um, it's going to be a problem on the appraisal. So give a through two or three days to resolve. If not, if they don't come to an agreement, your um, offer will, your contract will terminate. Sorry, guys. Um, then a new ILC or new survey deadline. Let's let that ring a little bit here and then I will get to these just a second. Okay, I'm back. Um, the new ILC or new survey. On a condo and townhome, you don't really need to put these dates in here for those because on a townhome or condo, you don't get a new I you don't get an, any kind of a survey of any kind. So you could put them in if it's a single family home. I always put it in. Doesn't mean they're gonna get one, it just means if the title company and or the lender requires it, then a new survey is needed to be requested. So put your dates in here. You can do it after your deadline or the same deadlines as your appraisal, that's fine too. So put these dates, don't put a whole lot between. So you have the survey, objection and resolution. And again, if you can't resolve, 
contract will terminate. So now we have two new deadlines. In paragraph two and eight, you have little boxes that you can check and it will be water rights examination deadline. The buyer will or will not do it. In most cases, I'm gonna tell you it probably will be will not, but if you're selling rural land or acreage, it could be yet, yeah, it will. Um, if, they're, if those uh, water rights are conveyed. So you have to ask the question, or it might be on the MLS. The same with mineral rights. And there'll be a box that says will or will not. And with that said, uh, what happens is, is that, um, hang on just a second, we have somebody else coming in here. Um, what happens here is with the mineral rights, um, it will or will not. In most cases, if it's like a normal subdivision, you don't have either water rights or mineral rights, okay? So you check the box, will, um, will not. However, if you're, if you're selling in, in Eastern um, part of the state there, or Southern, it could be water rights convey. It's very, very rare on either situation, but it does happen. But if you're doing rural like acreage in Albert Dalbert counties, you need to ask the question, are there any water rights and mineral rights? Let me assure you, what I would suggest that you do is get a name of a water, a couple of water attorneys, and a couple of mineral right attorneys. The situation is it would could take anywhere from two weeks to three months to re review any water rights and mineral rights because there's a lot of searching that has to go with. So what I'm telling you is, is that get those names, call their offices and ask them, one, what do they charge? And two, how long does it take to do a review? Have that in as your informational kit uh, to give to a buyer if there's a situation that arises, okay? Any questions on that? Donna, there are uh, a lot of water rights and mineral rights up here in Weld County, so, but they, they always put that in the disclosure. Right, so, so what you wanna do, Teresa, is get a couple of names of water right attorneys that might work in Weld County and find out if you have a client that has water rights how long does it take for examination? Okay. And do the same with min a mineral, because a water right attorney and a mineral right attorney are not the same. And you said, see how long, what it takes? They, it would take them to review the information if water rights conveyed with the property or if mineral rights conveyed with the property. Okay. Okay. If they uh, one question, list... I'm sorry, Teresa, go ahead. Um, go ahead. I'm sorry, Larry. Go um, ahead. Well, my, the only question I had was, Teresa kind of answered it, and I've seen it, obviously, but should the mineral rights be listed in um, the MLS? Usually the answer to that question is yes. Okay. Because I've seen it where, it, like, like she said, in Weld County, where it's, they basically are like, no mineral rights, no water rights, they, they list that off. But I haven't, I haven't seen it where they do say they do have mineral rights or water rights. I haven't seen it yet. So. Well, a lot of times, I'll be honest with you, Larry, the listing agent doesn't ask the question. So as a, per, uh, as a selling agent, you might always want to ask that question, even though they don't have anything in there. Because when they list a property, a lot of agents are not used to asking that question and they just assume no rights convey. Donna, <clears throat> as a buyer's agent, if you're looking at a property and it doesn't say um, mineral rights or water rights excluded, should we research that anyway? Because people make a lot of money off those mineral rights and water rights. Well, water I would tell you to ask the listing agent to be sure to check with the seller. You could research it. Okay. Um, and water rights are done by a bargain and sale deed. And there are shares and there are different water rights. What I would encourage all of you to do is somewhere along the line is to take a water right class and a mineral class. 
What that's gonna tell you is, I'll give you an example. Water rights are conveyed by bargain and sale deed. It has to be done. Usually it is done by a water attorney. It usually is very rare that a title company will convey those rights. Basically because they're separate situations. It's like recording a deed, you record the water rights. And these are situations, again, they're few and far between. Gold, water, water rights here in Colorado are like gold. They huge fights. So let me just assure you that if there's a ditch on this property and the water comes from north of this ditch, that water is not the person who lives on that property. It's not their water. It belongs to somebody else. Another situation is if a pond is collecting water, it very well not be the uh, property owner's right to use that water. Now, over time, people do use it and it just becomes that they think it's theirs, but it really isn't. Um, there's water rights, there's ditch rights, there's the Platte River can only have so many water, uh, gallons of water come out of it. Um, during a grows, growing season. So there's a lot of things that go into water rights. So I would encourage you all to take water, a water right class and a mil, mineral right class. They're not, they're super boring, I will tell you up front. But you'll learn in the water class that a lot of our water rights are owned by people in Southern Colorado and not people here uh in in the middle of the state or the northern part of the state it's just like the oil rights in uh well in adams county they're not always owned by whoever they're drilling the land on a lot of times that's leased so there's a lot of things that happen so become familiar with it you don't have to be an expert but you just become familiar with asking the, those questions does that make sense to everybody yep Okay. Would the title company provide those deeds then? I'm sorry, water? ask me again, Larry. Would the title company provide that water rights deed when they give all the title information? Normally not. It, it will come from a water attorney that okay. has prepared the deed to be conveyed to the new buyer. Okay. So but basically again, that seller would have to know. Yeah, the seller would know. Okay. Um, a lot of times they're going to sell the property with exclusion of the water rights. Uh, okay. And so if they've owned it for years and years, because one share of water could be, I don't know, twenty hundred thousand dollars So you, you, they may exclude that water right from the uh, uh, sale of the land and they keep the rights to the water but not, not uh, they don't own the land anymore. Same okay. with the minerals. They could keep the rights to the minerals and not, not convey them with the property, no. They don't always have to do that. Thank you, Donna. You're welcome. All righty, inspection termination deadline, inspection objection deadline. These have changed. Now, if you have a buyer, that says, I'm gonna do an inspection, great. Then you go along the same process we've done before, inspection, objection, deadline, you get an inspection and you submit it by a certain date. So I would encourage you to get your inspections between one week and two, uh, one and a half to two weeks after your acceptance deadline, depending on if the inspector can get out there. Now, if you have a cash buyer and he goes, I don't care what it is, I'm gonna take the down, a house down to the studs and redo the whole thing. Then that's an example, okay? <clears throat> then you want to keep inspection termination deadline and not put in a resolution termination deadline. Uh, I mean, sorry, in, in uh, the inspection resolution deadline. You, you don't want to put that in if, you're, if someone's paying cash and they are going not, they're going to do an inspection, but they're not going to request any kind of uh, resolution. So you have a cash buyer, they go do their, their um, um, inspection of the property, and the inspection comes back with bad roof, bad furnace, bad everything. The only way the buyer can get his earnest monies back is to uh, turn in an inspection termination. 
So you want to get that done quickly. And there is no resolution if you do the te termination. So when you write an offer, you put in the deadline for termination objection deadline to be the same. Then about two to four days later, inspection objection, inspection resolution deadline is about two to four days after the 18th, as you say, two days there. So you do in the beginning, you either terminate it or you inspect it. You don't do both. Does everybody understand that? Yes, I, I do. Okay. So, so your objection date and the termination date are going to be the same? Correct. Because you have to do one or the other. If you terminate, the contract's dead. If you object, then you go on to the inspection resolution deadline. Oh, okay. So if you, if you object, it basically voids out the termination deadline and brings you to the resolution deadline. Correct. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Good question. Um, property insurance termination deadline. I always put it down as the same date as the terminate inspection termination, inspection objection. I do that because here's the issue we run into. It is the fact that Please never assume that the property you put a contract uh, offer in and become a contract will get property insur hazardous insurance. If you're in the burn, if you're in the high uh, fire area, if you're in a flood area, people who are in Louisville and a Superior are going to have a hell of a time getting insurance, guys. Uh, absolutely, their pricing is going to go through the roof if it isn't already, because it is now declared under insurance situations as a fire hazard. If you're in the foothills, fire hazard. So what happens if you have an older house in certain areas, and I'll give you Cherry Creek Vista, which is I-25 in Bellevue, oh, oh, when, when that whole area was started, everybody had shake shingles. So now, because of the number of uh, uh, hail storms that have gone through that area, they probably, many of them don't have the original roofs on them anymore. They've got now a composite. But if you have a shake shingle roof, <coughs> that is like in Ken Carl Valley, they're not going to insure it, guys. So now what happens is if, if the seller says, well, I don't want to buy a new roof. Well, he's not going to be able to sell his house. So there has to become some kind of compromise here. Uh, one of our agents uh, years ago, so really put it, list a house and put it in a contract. And then his buyer couldn't get insurance on the shake shingle roof. It cost the seller 25 grand to put on a new composite roof because the insurer uh, insurance company would not, would not uh, insure it. So what you wanna do is make sure your buyers understand Get with your insurance carrier, whoever you're going to do, to find out the history on the house so they can get a um, insurance uh, on this property. They all go through the same system. It's called a clue report, and you're, it's by the address, and it'll do, it'll say how many claims that you've had. Is it water? Is it electrical? Whatever the claim is, okay. That way. If you have three years water damage against that house, three claims in a row, then the insurance is going to increase for the buyer and it follows the seller to the next house. So be careful, make sure, do not assume, always make sure they jump in on it and get that done right away. Okay. Everybody understand that? All righty. Due diligence. This is paragraph 10. Now, this is a paragraph that is not used unless there possibly is a leased item, solar, water, so, uh, alarm system, um, or have they finished the basement in the last few years? You want to check to see if there's permits pulled, those types of things. This is not where you put in, gosh, I want the manuals for the uh, refrigerator, stove, washer, and dryer, et cetera, okay? It's not where you put this in. You put that into additional provisions. 
So this is sometimes used if it's a condo and a, um, a townhome. A lot of times these are not used because they're not finding out any due diligence. Anything regarding the townhome will come into the HOA if there's a suit against them or something like that. That comes under the HOA information, okay? But not under due diligence. This is usually used for something that might be a leased item. Now, conditional sale deadline. And then back is, to due diligence, if they, again, they would have to list that in the MLS or they should be like it's a solar panel or an alarm system, correct? Well, Larry, I'm gonna tell you the answer to your question is yes. But sometimes we have listing agents that are not very, they don't notice a lot of things, okay? So the question as a listing agent, you don't, uh, an alarm should go on your head when you see an alarm system, a water system, ask the question, because if you drive up to the house, the solar panels may be on the backside and you didn't see it, okay? So it's always a question to ask. And the question, you'll see it in the listing agreement. It'll say, is there, is it leased? Is it owned? If it's leased, I need to see the documentation because that is a debt against the buyer and it becomes a problem. It's problematic if they can assume that lease or not. Okay. That leads me into my question with that from like, if you're putting in an offer, should we always put in dates for this then? Well, it depends. If you've got a um, house, uh, I would put it in. It doesn't mean you have to use it, but you also have to look at paragraph 10 to find out what box you're going to check on this. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Conditional sale deadline means, hey, Mr. Buyer or Mr. Seller, I'm submitting this offer and I've got a house that's going to close on February 28th. And we've already gone through the inspection and we've already gone through the uh, appraisal. Everything's fine. We're just waiting to close. So we're going to close on February 28th. If you read that paragraph, that paragraph says must be sold and closed prior to moving on to the next house. So you could possibly have simultaneous closings. A lot of times it's the day before. So be aware if you see that it's not a bad thing. You just want to know where it is. And then if you write your offer with that in it, you go to additional provisions and state that the house at 123 Main Street is under contract. They have completed inspection and appraisal and we're waiting for our closing date, uh, blah, blah, blah. Everybody understand that? Now, the next one is lead-based paint termination. Now we have a lead-based paint date up here that we saw right here under this item 12. So you get it and you'd put it and everybody sign it or you terminate it. Termination has to be about three days after, two to three days after you receipt the uh, lead-based paint uh, disclosure. Don't make this a long period of time. You do it very quickly, one to three days um, after you've sent over, after you've received that lead-based paint disclosures, okay? Now we have a closing date. And we have a closing date, we have a possession date, we have time. What you're going to see is many agents go, closing date is X and possession and time is to be determined. Don't do that. Put down a date and time. If Dora wanted to be determined, they would have put it in here. And that's lazy agents not trying to figure out how to solve this issue. Now, <clears throat> no title company will close after four o'clock and <clears throat> That'll be the latest. The closing will begin at four. Takes about an hour. So put 5 p.m. Now, if you close at 10 o'clock in the morning, you can do a quick A&E. Uh, that's an amend extend for Dana. And the uh, change the time. And it can get signed at closing. It is not a big deal. Uh, agents like to put a, make a big deal. But I can guarantee you there'll be a fight on closing date and time if you're not specific. Now, I'm gonna do a side note. And Dana, listen up, because one of your questions is probably about a post-closing occupancy. <clears throat> the post-closing occupancy must go with the contract or the offer 
um, and make sure you have everything filled out. Now, one of the things that you have is, let's say it's a 30-day post-closing occupancy. Then on your possession date and time, you put down the whatever the 30th day is and whatever time has been agreed upon in your post-closing occupancy for these two situations because the buyer is not getting the property on the actual day of closing. They're doing it on whatever date the post-closing occupancy agreement is. Everybody understand that? Yes, and I yes. missed that yesterday on my offer. So thank you for catching that, Donna. Yeah, no problem. Anybody else? Is that, is that understandable for everybody? Okay, yeah. great. Now, in the new contract that we have for 2022, a buyer is to receive a key at closing. It doesn't say garage door openers or anything else. It just says they will get a key at closing. So you don't have to worry about that. But on a post-closing occupancy, you do have to worry about getting garage door openers keys and uh, deposit money back. So be specific in additional provisions that states on this date, buyers and seller agree to meet, to exchange deposit check, and to receive additional keys and garage door openers and do a final walkthrough. So everything in our world must be specific or you're going to blow yourself up. Now, our last date is acceptance deadline. That means, hey, Mr. Buyer or Mr. Seller, we're giving you an offer. We want a a response time by a certain day. Now, I will tell you right now, that is probably not happening very often. Is it, Teresa? <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what happens is we have agents that go, let me put it out there for three days and we'll accept all offers. Well, when they get 20, they may cut it off and don't change the MLS, okay? Or they may do uh, accepting offers by noon on Saturday because they've had 20 showings on X property. You have to understand the seller does not have to accept the deadline that you put in here, okay? You're requesting that they do. One thing we try real hard is as a listing agent, and I'm going to teach all, I teach all my agents the same way. If you get 30 offers on a house or you get 20 offers, call every single one or text every single one. Thank you for your offer. Another offer was accepted. Please don't be the lazy agent that says, well, 20 people got it and I don't want to call all 19 people saying they didn't get it. But you really should because what happens if that offer is accepted and all of a sudden a week and a half later they get an inspection and now you got to go back on the market. But if you had called back everybody, you can find out who was willing to put a backup offer, who was willing to say, let me know if we get another, if you guys get another offer. So it's courteous to your uh, fellow agents to call back. And yes, it's very difficult. I do know that. But that's, they took the time. Remember, they took the time to submit an offer to you. You should take the time to express that. Yes, I received it, and no, you did not get it. So what I hear most about from our agents are the other agent doesn't tell me if he's got the offer or it, um, what they're doing. So communicate with them. They've taken the time to write it, so you take the time to communicate. I know that's probably a half an hour of your time. I get it. But I have to tell you, agents have a very long memory about the agents who are rude and not cooperative to them. When they see their name on a sign and times will get tougher, you're not gonna be so willing to go over to that listing knowing how difficult that agent is. So if you don't wanna become known as that difficult agent, please be kind enough to respond. Because uh, Teresa, over the last few days, sometimes they answer and sometimes they don't. And she, she knows who answered, she knows who didn't. And, you know, she, although they didn't get it, at least they notified her and said they didn't get it. Her buyers didn't get it. So be kind and let that happen. Okay, who's got a question on the dates and 
deadlines that we just went over. Anybody got a question? I don't have a I know. question, but oh. I really like that um, you said that because I agree. I hate when I put on a mouth or <clears throat> waiting well, or I'm, I got to reach back out to them to figure out what's going on. So I like that. Yeah. Well, it's also, I've been doing this a very long time, uh, 38 years. <laughs> and there's nothing that's more infuriating is when you get a smart ass agent on the other side who thinks they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. And they don't want to be helpful to the person who put the agent who put the offer in. So I think just cur being courteous is the best thing you can do. Thank you, Larry. Anybody else got a comment or a question? I do. Okay. Um, are all of these deadlines like on that day, on that particular day? Because there's one that I learned, it was one of the objection deadlines that was like one day after. So I'm just trying to get the correct information. I'm sorry, I'm not. I'm not sure I understand. Deadline for what? It depends on what it was. Asking. It was um, one of the objection deadlines. Are all of these deadlines on the day that's listed? None of so them are it, like the day after. It could be. It could be the day after. You. You. you let me think how to say this. <clears throat> I gave you an example. So when you write an offer, you want to be sure you make sure these don't fall on Saturday and Sunday. But a deadline, it could be three days, it could be five days, it could be eight days, okay? They're all different, but I'm teaching you to write a tighter deadline in the front end of the contract rather than the back end of the contract. Does that make sense? Right. So do you think, can you think of an example of what you're talking about for me? Um, I can't remember. The, it was just like, one of the objection deadlines there was a question about it um and it was one of the objection deadlines but it had stated that it was the day after oh the rotate. day after the deadline yeah the day after the deadline okay so the day after the, yeah the day after the, yeah the yeah. day after the deadline means that either the contract will be uh terminated or they can't object because if they go past their deadline, there's no buyers can't object to it. So there is no day after it's just no. day of when it's the, written down. <laughs> that is correct. Okay. That is correct. I didn't understand it initially. But do you I have now. to do a revive of the contract if they miss that? Um, if they miss the deadline, you yes, you would have to do that. Uh, there's a document, Dana, Dana, that is called revise the contract. And um, but I think for your test question, they're just going to give you three or four answers. It'll say, does it terminate? Does it go ahead or something along that line? And if you miss a deadline, basically you have passed your objection or you might have terminated your contract. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have anything else, Dana? Um, I don't think so. Okay. Anybody else got an objection? I mean, a question? No, thank Donna, you. I just want to clarify on that objection deadline. <clears throat> if you miss the objection deadline, can they still hold you to the contract, even though you missed that objection, just saying, well, you didn't object, we're moving forward? Yes, they can. Yes, okay. they can. Because you're telling the seller you're not objecting to anything, so they're moving on. Everybody's moving on. Okay, so you would have to actually put it in writing that you missed the uh, the objection deadline and you're terminating the contract. Well, it, you can't terminate it unless you're, if you're not objecting to anything and you didn't give notice to a seller on that objection, then you can't, you're not terminating on that. Okay. okay. Uh -huh. But if you don't like whatever it was, you can object or terminate on it. Okay. Makes sense? Yes, thank you. Okay. Anybody else got another question? Okie dokie here. Um, next week, we will be doing 
um, listing contracts. So it, um, Dana, if you'd like to drop in, that would be great too. Listing contracts we're going to do. There isn't a whole lot that changed, but if you have any questions or want to be in listings, that'll be great. And then the following week, let me double check. And is that Monday at noon as well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It certainly is. All right. Let me double check something here. Yes. On the 14th, Dana, just so you know, we will be doing buy-sell contracts. So okay. next week is listing, and then the following week will buy-sell. Okay? Okay. Anybody else got another question? If you do, everybody knows how to get a hold of me. Have a great day. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Donna. My Thank pleasure. You. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.